Welcome to the Saving Lives Podcast. I'm Eddie Joe. Today, I'm going to be discussing the newest trial on IV vitamin C, hydrocortisone, and thiamine that was published in JAMA today. But before I go over the study, I want to talk a little bit about why I have all this interest in vitamin C, thiamine, as well as steroids. You know, it might seem a little bit irrational compared to how other intensivists cover it, why I have become so fixated on this. But I want to explain to you why, and hopefully you'll learn a thing or two. As a critical care doctor, my job is, as I named this, appropriately named this podcast, Saving Lives, my job is to save people's lives. And I take care of a lot of people who have sepsis and septic shock. My job, of course, is to save their lives. And a lot of people don't really know how prevalent sepsis and septic shock is. And data that came out in 2019 in The Lancet shows that worldwide, there's almost 50 million cases of sepsis worldwide. And it is the cause of approximately 20% of all global deaths. That's a lot of deaths, guys. And so when you think about it, I know the majority of people who listen to this podcast based on demographics are in the United States. But we have to think about the entire world that doesn't necessarily have the resources that are available in the United States. So we need to think about these folks who are, for example, in other underdeveloped countries. Are they really going to be able to uh, afford whatever immunomodulator comes out in the future? Are they going to be able to afford whatever monoclonal antibody is in the future? I don't think the answer to those questions is yes. So we need to start looking at things that are cheap, affordable, practical, obtainable, to hopefully at least not necessarily show a statistical, statistically significant improvement in mortality, but be an adjunct to the therapy that we're giving patients to hopefully increase the survival rates and decrease mortality in our critically ill patients. I am not going to discuss the biological rationale as to why patients should receive stress dose steroids when they are in septic shock, because that data is pretty clear, especially over the last 20 years, I would say, since 2002, when the first Anon trial showed that there was a decreased mortality in patients who were in septic shock when they received uh, stress dose steroids. In that case, they used fludrocortisone as well as hydrocortisone. But since then, you know, like the Corticus trial showed that there was a improved res resolution of shock. Then the Adrenal trial showed the same. The second Anon trial in 2018 showed the same. So, the idea of giving patients corticosteroids should not be very should not be very contentious should not be something that's extremely debatable there's good data to support giving that ultimately the main side effects that we see are not super infections not increased gi bleeds but what we do see is patients have hyperglycemia now we got insulin for that guys i mean if we're going to help patients do better Hyperglycemia is something that we could treat with insulin. A good enough time to go ahead and give the disclaimer that none of this is medical advice. Everything that I'm saying has citations. If you go over to the show notes, I've done a whole blog post on all the physiologic concepts as well as citations to all the articles that uh, support the data that I'm saying right now. But don't go change your practice based on what I say. Be change your practice based on the citations and you checking those out. We have done studies in the past, and when I say we, I mean the medical community, where 88% of patients who are septic shock have hypovitaminosis C, and 38% of patients in septic shock have severe vitamin C deficiencies. And this is extremely important when you consider the fact that pretty much every animal under the sun, except for primates, humans, and guinea pigs, all produce their own endogenous vitamin C. We do not actually produce our own vitamin C. We need to actually consume it from our, from our nutrition. And vitamin C has a bunch of good effects on us. For example, it's a free radical scavenger. It prevents the generation of new free radicals. It assists in the recycling of other antioxidants. And amongst, amongst its antioxidant effects, it reduces endothelial permeability, improves microvascular function, improves macrovascular function. And one thing I bet that most of you do not know, unless you've been following me on Instagram for a while, is the fact that ascorbic acid is a necessary cofactor for the production of endogenous catecholamines. In other words, our bodies, you know how they make dopamine and norepinephrine in the adrenal glands? Well, this doesn't happen very well 
if you don't have appropriate ascorbic acid to use in all this. So then you also have to consider the immune system effects of the vitamin C. It regulates the function of macrophages, it reduces inflammatory mediators, and it also maintains vasopressor responsiveness. I mean, these things are all good things that come out of using IV vitamin C. And if these things could go ahead and improve outcomes, well, why shouldn't we go ahead and look into it? Which is the reason why I'm glad that there's so many studies out there that are investigating IV vitamin C. Unfortunately, for one reason or another, the studies are not panning out with the dramatic effects that Paul Merrick saw in his study in 2017. But then again, retrospective before after studies like the one that Dr. Merrick published that started all the all the rage of sorts with IV vitamin C well those those types of studies have a million <laughs> a million limitations that cannot necessarily be reflected on a prospective double blind randomized control trial it's just something to keep in mind just as some background as well today is August 18th of 2020 and the article I'm going to be discussing today which is the effect of ascorbic acid, corticosteroids, and thiamine on organ injury and septic shock was also published today, August 18th, 2020. And the name for this trial, because you know that a lot of these trials have an acronym for them, is the ACTS trial, A-C-T-S. I know that my accent might have just kind of butchered that. But basically the A is for ascorbic acid, C for corticosteroids, T for thiamine, and S for septic shock. Quickly looking over the abstract and to then dig into the meat and potatoes of this all, they wanted to look at vitamin C, steroids, and thiamine as a potential therapy for septic shock and to see if it works. So what they did is between February 2018 and October of 2019, they got 14 different shops in the United States and they enrolled 205 patients. This ultimately was a randomized, blinded, multi-center clinical trial where they basically gave patients the cocktail versus placebo and septic shock. The doses that they used for this were 1,500 milligrams of vitamin C, five, excuse me, 50 milligrams of hydrocortisone, and 100 milligrams of thiamine every six hours for four days versus placebo. I have to tip my hat to the authors because I think they did a very good job on this trial. The primary outcome was a change in the SOFA scores. And for those of you who are wondering what a SOFA score is, it's a sequential organ failure assessment score. Basically looks at how the patient's organs are doing amongst a bunch of other components. They had other secondary outcomes like renal failure, mortality, a bunch of other stuff there that, you know, one should consider to be important. But of course, one of the things that's important to note is that to prove mortality in a study like this, first of all, I don't think that researchers are allowed to take, take NIH money anymore if they're looking for mortality as a primary endpoint because it's really hard to prove and you have to, you have to enroll really large uh, sample sizes. I may be wrong on that and correct me if you think I am because I probably am, but that's what I heard. I will make the quick commentary with regards to SOFA score that Alpha Fowler's study where he gave patients who were in ARDS IV vitamin C found that there was no change in the patient's inflammatory markers, no SOFA scores, nor SOFA scores, excuse me. But they did find in that study as a secondary outcome, of course, that there was decreased mortality in the patients who had ARDS and received vitamin C compared to the patients who had ARDS and did not receive vitamin C. Taking that into account, though, in this study, looking at the mean change in SOFA score, in the intervention group, it did drop lower than the placebo group. But at the end of the day, it was not statistically significant with a p-value of 0.12. When evaluating the secondary outcomes, there was no statistically significant difference in all-cause mortality at 30 days, renal failure days, excuse me, renal failure, ventilator-free days. There was a difference in shock-free days as the patients who received vitamin C got out of shock faster. No difference in incidence of delirium, no difference in ICU-free days, number of other things, no difference. When looking at studies where you give a drug for sepsis and septic shock, you need to see how fast these people got this, this actual study drug. And I think they did a reasonably good job here, at least much better than the vitamins trial, where from the time of informed consent to receiving the study drug was about 2.2 hours. That was a median time. 
and the time from receiving the first study drug from when they initiated the vasopressors was 14.5 hours in the group that got the study drug. So all things considered, that's uh, not extremely fast in my opinion, but at the same time is quicker than other trials. So I have to tip my hat to the authors for that. I also do have to give the caveat that I myself am not a trialist. So there are a lot of things about doing clinical trials that I personally do not know. So I don't want to throw shade at one of the authors here by saying things like that, when ultimately I could be completely mistaken and could be completely wrong. It certainly caught my eye that the median lactate level at enrollment was 1.8 millimole per liter. That's not enough to like sound the sepsis alarms in a lot of facilities, but that's what they did. There's no other way of looking at this, but truth is this is a negative trial. I mean, it's really hard to tease out any benefits here, especially when the fact, especially with the fact, excuse me, that the control group didn't get any corticosteroids. That's something that was done in the vitamins trial. And the reason why this is important is because corticosteroids do, based on certain trials, improve mortality. They do, in certain trials, improve the time that patients spent on the ventilator, in other words, getting them down. And they also decrease the amount of uh, vasopressors patients need. But whatever, this is what they found in this study. I always tip my hat to the authors when they are pretty transparent when it comes to the limitations of the study. And here, the authors were very, very transparent with the limitations of their study. All in all, like I said before, this is a negative study that showed that there's no change in the SOFA scores in patients who receive uh, vitamin C, thiamine, and steroids. So where does this leave us today? Very few data out there that say an improvement in mort mortality, and it's not the highest quality. So we need to wonder, what are we trying to do with these studies? And it, it's going to be kind of a rant here that I'm going to go on. So excuse me for all this. Maybe we could keep on doing study after study and trying to show that it's going to help out absolutely everybody. But that just might be the wrong way to think about it. Maybe what we need to start doing is start individualizing our treatments based on patient needs, as opposed to try to cure everybody with one particular concoction. Yesterday, I did a lecture at my alma mater, and my, my program director, or my ex-program director, made a very good point that, and of course, I have to listen to everything he says, one of my mentors and one of the smartest individuals I know. But he said that maybe this 20 to 25% mortality in sepsis and septic shock is the best that we're going to be able to do. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, no, no other trial is going to show a mortality benefit. No other drug is going to show a mortality benefit. And maybe we might just have to accept that. And it's, it's hard for me to accept that because, of course, my job is to save people's lives. But maybe some people will benefit from this concoction of vitamin C, thiamine, and steroids. Uh, and perhaps the majority won't. But we need to evaluate whether we're going to consider giving it to the, that special subset of patients that might never be shown in a clinical trial. Because, you know, you're not going to do a clinical trial on patients who, um, who are septic shock and have underlying cancer. You know, you can't, you can't randomize patients to that. All in all, I mean, I'm a bit, I'm a bit disheartened by all this data that's showing no, no clear benefit. But I think that there ultimately might be, a, uh, might be a function to give this concoction in certain patients. And it's not going to be a cure for sepsis. It's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be revolutionary or anything like that. But if it could help out a certain amount of people, then it's something worth trying in my opinion. The data purists will completely disagree with that. But when you consider that the intervention is so cheap, it's harmless, no adverse effects, uh, generally speaking, although, you know, you should, you should consider who you give it to, then, then maybe we might come to a conclusion where, where, we, where it has its place in critical care medicine. But if the data is purist right now, we'll say no. All in all, um, I, I guess I'm done ranting. Those are my sentiments on this. Hope you have a great day. Bye.